Wildlife is one of the many natural assets that we value here in Minnesota. But sometimes, wildlife interferes with human activities. For example, white-tailed deer eating and damaging agricultural crops or stored forage. This is one case where the conflict between humans and wildlife can be resolved by following the adage, good fences make good neighbors. A properly constructed wildlife fence can eliminate most agricultural damage caused by deer. Building one of these fences is within the skills of most landowners, but you'll need a plan first. The basic parts of a fence are corner assemblies, line posts, woven wire fence, and gates. For extra long sections, you may also need a brace assembly to keep the fence from sagging or pulling out of position. Brace assemblies or corner assemblies are needed on each side of a gate to support it and to keep the fence in place. Gates can range from 4 to 32 feet wide. Rolls of woven wire fencing are attached to the line posts and stretched tight. The rolls are spliced together using one of two methods, either crimping or twisting the wires. Top wires are added above the woven wire fence, increasing its effective height to provide better protection from wildlife. The plan for a wildlife fence should clearly show these basic features along with its location, dimensions, and the area enclosed. Because corners use more materials, the most economical installation is a rectangle. Once you have a plan for installing the fence, it's time to gather the tools and supplies for the job. To begin, you need to get proper protective gear for yourself and any helpers. Don't consider building a fence without these precautions. You don't want injuries or the delays and costs that go with them. Each person working on the fence should wear a hard hat, eye protection, and leather gloves. Heavy fence posts, sharp wire ends, and hand tools can easily cause head and eye injuries, cuts, and punctures. When power equipment like skid loaders and chainsaws are being used, other personal safety gear should be added, such as hearing protection and leg chaps. Follow all of the manufacturer's safety recommendations. To build a wildlife fence, you need some large equipment. For digging the fence post holes, you'll need a skid loader or end loader with a 12-inch hydraulic auger capable of boring a hole 6 feet deep. An auger on a three-point hitch will not do the job. Neither will a manual post hole digger because you'll be making six-foot deep holes that are 12 inches in diameter. An optional approach is hiring a crew with post driving equipment to install the posts quicker without digging holes. Another time-saving tool is a wire fence spooler that is installed on a skid loader or end loader. It will make it easier to move and unroll the woven wire fencing, but you can do the job by hand, too. There are a couple of tools that you definitely need. A spinning jenny to spool out stiff wire, and three chain pullers that will attach to a pair of fence stretcher bars with pin wedges. The pullers and bars will be used to tighten up the fence. There are a number of common hand tools that will be needed for this job and you'll need a tool apron to carry them as you work along the fence. You want a 20 to 23 ounce framing hammer for driving staples and brace pins. A three pound hand maul is useful for driving the bolts for gate hinges into place. A wire cutting pliers, a 24 to 30 foot tape measure, and a 300 foot measuring tape or a measuring wheel will be needed. A 1 and 1 8 inch combination wrench will be used when installing gate fittings. A half inch cordless power drill with a 3 8 inch drill bit and a 3 4 or 5 8 inch drill bit will be used to make holes for brace pins and hinge bolts. The drill bits need to be at least 12 inches long to drill through the posts. You'll also want a level, a shovel, 
and tamping bars. And finally, you'll likely want a couple specialized fencing tools. A crimping tool to splice fencing, and a manual wire twisting tool, or a drill operated wire twister. Now that all the tools and equipment are ready, it's time to get the fencing supplies and materials. To mark lengths on posts for cutting and setting them, get some lumber crayons. A can of spray paint will let you quickly mark the post locations on the ground, and you may want to add a flag, a lath, or a fiberglass rod so it's easier to find the spot again. You'll need three sizes of pressure-treated wood posts for the fence. For corner and brace assemblies, you'll need 6 inch by 16 foot treated wood posts. For line posts, less expensive 4 inch by 14 foot posts are adequate. For cross braces between upright brace post assemblies, you'll need 5 inch by 16 foot posts. A supply of coarse sand and gravel aggregate material, such as Class 5 road mix or pit run sand, should be on hand for backfilling the holes around the posts after they are set. This is especially useful if your soil type is heavy organic or clay. For installing cross brace posts, you'll use 5 inch and 10 inch brace pins. Tightening the brace assembly will be done with wire strainers and a strainer handle. Heavy-duty tension springs will be used to tighten top wires. Attached to the posts will be woven wire fencing of 12-gauge high tensile wire, Class 3 galvanized. This fencing comes in 330-foot rolls. The wire spacing should be 20 96 12 or 20 96 6, meaning 20 horizontal wires on a 96-inch tall fence with vertical wires 12 or 6 inches apart. For the guide wire, bracing wire, and top wires on the fence, you'll need 12 and a half gauge high tensile steel class 3 galvanized wire. The wire should be 170,000 pounds per square inch tensile breaking strength. Wires with higher tensile strength can be used but are more difficult to work with and bend. To attach the fence, 9 gauge class 3 galvanized 1 and 3 quarters inch barbed staples will be used. Splices will be done with crimping sleeves for 12.5 gauge wire if you don't twist the fence wires to connect them. And the last supplies are gates, hinges, and bolt through hinge pins to mount them.